Well, good morning, guys. I think you remember me doing the video on the water pump replacement, and this is the old water pump. There was no core in this pump, and so it's mine to play with. I thought I'd take it apart and identify the features of this water pump and see how it all works. Just uh, an initial uh, introduction. The two heater hoses hook on here. This is the return hose, and this is the uh, outlet hose. The thermostat hooks on here, so cold water comes in here. And this is the main outlet hose going back to the radiator with hot liquid. And uh, of course, the uh, serpentine belt, the back of the belt, hooks on here, spinning the pump. And we've got some bolts in the back here. So let's take these bolts off and have a look. So there it is there. I'm not seeing a nut or bolt on this end. You can see it spins like so. So I'm going to take a three-jaw puller off and see if I can get off this part and disassemble this a little further. Okay, I've got that free. Um, a three-jaw puller just pulled this off like so. And we're left with this here. You can see there's a bit of a slot there, but it's not coming completely free. I suppose I could just beat on this here, but I think the simplest thing to do would be to put this into a press now and push this out this way. Let's give that a go. All right, so ha let's have a look at this. What you have is a set of ball bearings, and you can see that the fracture line is right on the set of ball bearings and then deeper inside a set of roller bearings and you can see here here is the weep hole let me give you a little closer look so deep inside you can see that set of roller bearings and then the ball bearing case sits here and then you see three chambers this one here is a blind chamber attached to the weep hole right there and then you can see where the seal was resting. And then inside of that, you've got the intake cavity and the exit cavity, the high pressure and low pressure cavities for the pump. Let me show so you. let's have a look at this weep hole. Let's look at how it works. The seal separates the bearings from the coolant and water right here. This is where the seal is, this red mark. And on the other side of that is the weep hole. Now, if water begins to make its way past the seal, it will pool initially in this blind cavity. This cavity goes nowhere except out the weep hole. Uh, when it eventually goes out the weep hole, that's your early warning. If you don't notice it or ignore that warning, what happens is you get rust building up in those ball bearings and in the roller bearings deeper. And as it rusts, the resistance increases and your belt begins to squeal. If you ignore it for even longer, the serpentine belt may actually fail and then your engine overheats. So this is the impeller of the pump and it rotates in this direction drawing coolant and water from the middle and flinging it out by centripetal force. You see that? So fluid, fluid is drawn into here and flung outward. And so what that does is it draws cold coolant from this side from the inside this second chamber, flinging it outward to this chamber here. You know, the design of this pump seems complicated, but yet it's elegantly simple. I put some strings to show you which way fluid flows. We start with the radiator return hose. This is cool water coming from the radiator, coming in here. And it follows the blue string to there. You see that? And from there, coolant is flung outward by the impeller to this area here. And from here, coolant follows the white strings to the engine, cooling the engine off. On return, engine coolant comes back from the engine, hot engine coolant, to these two holes here. And these two are confluent. They they join in the center and go outward back to the radiator or back to the heater depending on which offers the path of least resistance. 
Now comes what I see as the most interesting part of this process. I'm going to put a blue light in there just to show you. This is the coolant bypass hole. You know, a very wise mechanic once said to me that the first job of the engine cooling system is to allow the engine to warm up to operating temperature as quickly as possible. And as such, you don't want the warming water from the coolant system to be sent to a cold radiator to cool the engine down. At warm up, you want that whole system bypassed, and this is how it happens. Coolant is normally drawn in through here, hits the impeller, and comes back out as a high pressure system. And if this orifice is open, the water can effectively short circuit and just circulate amongst itself with very little flow to or from the engine. That allows the engine to warm up quickly. As the engine warms up, this water that's passing here warms up to the point that it stretches out the thermostat. Now the thermostat bolts on right here and the head of the thermostat seals against this surface. And so as the thermostat warms up, it stretches out and more and more prevents flow from bypassing the water pump. When this is plugged off, the water pump um, forces water the more laborious route out to the radiator it's cooled down and fluid comes back in through the thermostat and back to the water pump. It's a beautiful design, offering quick warm-up, yet optimal cooling after operating temperature is achieved. So that's how Chevy designed its water pump system. Say, uh, if this video helped you out and you want to see more of them, hit the like or subscribe button or leave a comment. That kind of activity makes it easier for others to find. Thanks for watching.